Hallelujah. Welcome to Tuesday Night Live. <laughs> this is the night the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it because we have a choice. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, make the right choice. <laughs> yes. Make the right choices. Anybody ever make a mistake? Don't raise your hands. Because if you don't, then you'd be a liar. <laughs> We've all made mistakes. Amen. But thank God for mercies and grace and his faithfulness. And thank God for the blood that you can repent and come out of things that were holding us. Um, thank you. I want to go to Galatians chapter 6 first. We need an understanding. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 1. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. Verse 1. Brethren, if a man is overtaken in tr any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one examine his own work. And then he will have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. For each one shall bear his own load. Let him who taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever man sows, he's going to what? Reap. Nobody gets away with it. Nobody. No matter how it looks. Nobody gets away with it. God knows exactly the heart, the mind, and what's going on behind closed doors. Just because no one else sees it, God sees it. Amen? And he says, look at this. He says, verse 8, For he who sows to his self or his flesh will, will, will of the flesh what? Reap corruption. That means the enemy is going to have access to you, and you can't grow. But he who sows to the spirit uh, of the spirit reap everlasting life. Let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not lose heart. In other words, sowing in the spirit means comes out of your mouth. The more you sow in the spirit, those words up there, don't let one of them fall. You want help from God, you have to pay for it. And you pay for it by sowing, sowing, and sowing. Does everybody get it? Everybody wants help from God. You're not going to get it unless you sow. That is the price that you and I must pay. We cried out, Lord, help me. That's called mercy. Amen. What does he do? He puts you in a place to learn. That's what he does with all of us. He gives us an opportunity to sow in the spirit so we can outrun our reaping. That reaping of the flesh must be, that bank must be emptied or you will never be free. So the more you sow in the Spirit, the more you decree the Word, the more you worship God, the more you sing those words, you are sowing in the Spirit and you are reaping life so that you can outrun what is due to each and every one of us. Amen? Amen. See, so many people give up. They think it's just some kind of ritual thing or whatever. It's just whatever. Listen, until you can break through and get across that dimensional line, from the carnal and to the spirit, that's when something happens. But there's a price. You must not quit. Amen? It's amazing when we were out there how much we fought for the dope. How much we fought for everything else that was evil. 
But then when we come to be a Christian, all of a sudden it's like, oh, God's going to do it all. Yeah, he's going to do it if you cooperate with him. Amen. Does everybody understand? That's why so many times people quit. And as soon as they're getting ready to get a breakthrough, the enemy comes with that voice again. And they quit. And they miss the breakthrough. Then they go back into that cycle again. Amen. So I just want to share that with everyone because it's so important. Never stop sowing. As a believer, we must sow constantly. We sow our way out of everything. That's the only way out is to sow your way out. Amen. James chapter 1. James 1. You know, when we come into the kingdom, it's not a religious act because it's a military operation. The kingdom of God is a military operation. This is not a religious act. In fact, the word says that he knew you before you were. Does everybody get it? That means you were with him before you even came here. Had you ever considered it possible that you volunteered to come here? And he said, he said, you know what? If I send you there because you want to go there and help, you're going to forget everything. You're going to be born in darkness and there won't be no light. You're going to forget who you are, where you came from. And you're not going to like me. But if you press through, if you continue to do what's right, I'm going to keep an eye on you the whole time. I'm going to send people across your path to try to awaken you. I'm going to try to unplug you from the world. I'm going to send messages, messengers, everything to try and awaken you and get you rescued. So that you can get reconnected to me. Not just saved, but born again. Because when you get born again of the Spirit, you are reconnected again. And you know who you are. And I'm going to restore memory to you. I'm going to bring things to you. And I'll be a father to you. And you'll be my sons and daughters. And you'll know who you are. Your true identity will come from the throne of God and not from man anymore. See, but many people here still are not awake yet. Because they're saved, they think they're okay. No, you must be born again in the spirit. There's a difference. It's a state of being. You stay saved, you're in the outer court. You must be born again to get in closer. And as to be filled and baptized in the Holy Ghost so that you can get further in. Everyone needs power, right? We need the power to overcome. You think God knows that? Amen. James 1, verse 12. Let's speak it together. Is everybody there? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. What's the first word? Blessed. What's the opposite of blessed? Cursed. See, when... You become cursed because of certain things that happen that gives the powers of darkness, demons, a legal right to access you. Does everybody get it? Blessed is the man who what? Endures temptation. That word endures means resists. Everyone say resist. For when he has been approved, he will receive a crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. I want to share with you that there's something that God rewards us instantly here. You, as you continue to resist. Now, there's a res as you continue to resist, there's a reward of a crown of life when you get home. But there's a, a reward now. The more you resist, the stronger you get. What does he release? He releases strength to you. Does everybody get it? He releases what? Strength. So resistance builds strength. Amen? 
Everyone say it with me. Resistance builds strength. It says, he will receive a crown of life with which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. How many of y'all know a desire is an emotion? Amen. Then when desire has conceived... When it's been agreed with, when it's been acted on, it gives birth to the presence of evil, which is called sin. And sin, when it is full grown, brings death. Don't be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every precious gift is from above and comes from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Come on, read it with me. So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to what? Hear. Slow to speak. Slow to wrath. For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Again, endurance is resistance. Resisting temptation. What is this temptation? To act on rebellion or influence... <laughs> Against God's righteousness. Amen. There is a reward of strength every time you overcome in resistance. In other words, if you, in the physical realm, people go to work out at the gym. What is a workout? It's actually resistance, isn't it? You're lifting weights. You're doing whatever. Everything in the, in the physical is resistance. That's how you get stronger. It's the same thing in the spirit realm. You are resisting those influences, and you become stronger. If you don't resist them, you become weaker. Is everybody okay? Praise God. You know, people get in condition to play sports, do whatever. You must be conditioned in the spirit to warfare. We are called to be soldiers in the spirit. Again, this is not some religious act. In fact, this is not a Bible study. This is a training session. We are being trained up to overcome every area and infiltrate places to fight. Why? We are called to what? Battle. What's our purpose? Destroy Satan's kingdom. What's our destiny? Infiltrate the world system and rescue those who have been taken captive. Amen? That's what we live for now. Why? Because we are, should be heaven bound, not earth bound. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says that the drawing away from righteousness starts with a voice. That's why many people hear voices. With a voice, then a desire. It's an emotional feeling. When desire of emotion is not resisted, it's accepted. Does everybody got it? If it's not resisted, it's what? It's accepted. And then the act of acceptance opens the door to the presence of evil. We call sin. And the wages of sin is death, isn't it? Unless, we're, you know, I mean, if people, unless they're willing to turn, they stay in that condition, death awaits them. Hell awaits them. Remember, every thought has a voice. Every thought is a voice, isn't it? When you think of something, you hear a voice. Amen? Thoughts are voices. Now, we want the right voice. We want the voice of the Lord, not the voice of the stranger. But many people still can't discern the difference. It takes a, pra a practice to learn the voice of God. It must be practiced. Now, there are many demonic spirits called familiar spirits that like to imitate the voice of God. One thing you can always know is never God, God never interrupts himself. Never. If he's asked you to do something, he wouldn't interrupt it. I get people come up to me, well, you know, God told me this. Oh, no, he didn't. He wouldn't interrupt himself. He's a God of order, not disorder. Amen? If you made a commitment to do something, you fulfill the vow, you bring a curse on you. It's that simple. You know how many times that we quit things and never repented for them? Every time we said something we were going to do and never did it, that's a curse. That's unfulfilled vows that need to be repented all the time. 
Every day it should be a part of our prayer life. Lord, forgive me for any unfulfilled vow, because there are things that you don't even know that you didn't do that you can complete. Amen? Every thought is a voice, a desire and a feeling, a voice of influence from the evil spirits taken from your past memory. Amen? What's it going to do? Entice. It wants to conceive so that the spirits can have access and position your members in your memory and torment you. Remember, they want to use any human being. A demon can't operate in this realm without using a person. He doesn't get his task done. And we don't fight flesh and blood. You know, so many times people think that their own thought, their thoughts are their own. Where are those thoughts coming from? Who's telling you those things? Amen? They don't even monitor their thoughts. They just do it. First Peter 1. Resistance builds strength. First Peter one. Oh yeah, I think it's first Peter one. Verse three. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for us, who are kept by the what? The power of God, who is the Holy Spirit, God's presence through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the what? Last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, uh, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials. Hey, are trials that come an opportunity to resist? So if you resist, what's the reward? Strength. Amen? Amen. He said that the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to the praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen you love, though now you do not see him, yet believing you rejoice with joy inexpressibly and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your soul. So you and I are kept by the power of God to resist trials of temptation that rebel against the order and righteousness of God Almighty. Again, resistance builds strength in the spirit realm. The reward is strength to get stronger. The more you resist, the stronger you get. Hallelujah. No resistance, you become weak and easily deceived, then pushed into disorder and rebellion and works of the flesh. Acts chapter 1. Kept by the power of God. Now, that doesn't mean you don't do anything. <laughs> Amen? It means you just have to cooperate. Acts 1. In verse 4. Resistance builds strength. Now you can resist so much in the physical and even in the flesh, but you can't, you can't hold on, you know. That's called demon management. Trying to manage those demons, you can't do it. They'll eventually take you out. Amen? But in the spirit, you can overcome, you can resist by the power of Christ. In verse 4, let's speak it. And being assembled together with them, he did what? He what? He commanded. He didn't ask. He didn't beg. He didn't say you should. He commanded. 
He commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to what? Wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall receive, be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So what was he doing? He was telling them to wait for the fulfillment of what they call a feast of Pentecost, to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And he said he commanded them. Now I want you to understand that he told 500 disciples this, and only 120 showed up. The rest went out and started denominations. Amen? Come on, is everybody okay? Sheesh, lighten up. <laughs> Tough crowd, what's up? <laughs> Glory. Verse 6. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, what will you Will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? Of course, he wasn't talking about Israel. And he said, It is not for you to know the times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. But you shall receive what? You shall receive what? Power. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Receive the power, the baptism of the Holy Spirit to overcome or resist attacks of temptation. Especially the emotional attacks. Amen. Again, without the power of the Holy Spirit, you, can't, you and I can't do it. You can know all the word of God and you will still won't be able to overcome. It must be backed by the anointing of God Almighty, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 6. And once you get filled with the Holy Spirit, you must maintain the filling of the Holy Spirit. That's where the enemy loves to come in and say, don't worship anymore. You're okay. The moment you think about, you know, I need to get help so that I can get my life back together. You're in trouble. See, when the Lord came to me, this voice came to me and said, Guy, do you want to get off of drugs and alcohol? Or do you want a new life? And I knew what he was asking. I had to walk away from my life. And, and I, I, I had to come to a place of no return. No return. A point of no return. You must walk away from that life and step into my realm and my life. In other words, no more friends, no more associations. I'm going to make arrangements. I'm going to build your house. I'm going to put the people in your life. I'm going to get you the job. I'm going to get you the spouse. I'm going to, I'm going to do all of this. You're not. Do you want a new life or do you want to stay the way you are? And I said, I want a new life. And you know what he said to me? Show me. You know, you thought maybe, okay. He said, show me. So I checked in with detox and so forth. And I began to just pray and ask for help. I mean, I went home after I got a detox. First of all, I threw the girl that was living there out. I said, this ain't right. For some reason, I knew that something wasn't right. I mean, before I could care less about sin, you know. And for some reason, I knew there was something supposed to happen. I didn't know how or what. And next thing I know, things started happening in my life. And two months later, the Lord came and visited me. And I was never the same. But one thing I learned was, it's his presence that we're all looking for. Why? Because that's where we came from. That's where we came from. His presence. And that's what we want. We want home. That's what we want. So the enemy comes with all kinds of things. Drugs, alcohol, lies, cheats, pornography. All of these things. Self-fulfilling. Temporarily. All self-fulfilling. See, only his presence can fulfill you. 
And you must press in to his presence to stay filled with his presence. Amen. Is everybody okay? Praise God. Ephesians 6, verse 10. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Finally, my brethren, be what? Strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Well, how are you going to be strong in the Lord? You're going to have to, number one is resist the enemy, right? But how are you going to resist the enemy without the power of God? You can't. So it's vital that you get baptized in the Holy Spirit as quick as possible. You must desire it. You must seek it. And then you must maintain it. Amen? Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be well able to what? Stand or what? Resist against the trickery of the devil or wiles. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, in other words, the physical things, but against principalities, which is rulers, governments, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against the spiritual hosts of what? Wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand or resist in the evil day, having done all to stand or resist. Being strong. Remember, it's a reward of resistance. We are empowered by the Spirit to assist us in resisting. We stand against, we withstand, and we resist and endure against evil forces of influence. Final reward, again, again, is the crown when we get home. The stronger you are, the more humble you are. You are not prideful. The stronger you are in the spirit, the more humble you are. And the more grace is released to you or the plan is released to you. And that's for your destiny. I want to say that again, the stronger you are in the spirit, the more humble you are. Romans 8. Eight, eighteen. Everybody there? Let's speak it together, okay? Because we're going to sow. We're going to sow to you. Sow what? Romans eight eighteen. For I consider that the suffering of this present time, hey, is, is suffering anything associated with resisting? Yeah. So the suffering you and I are going through, especially emotional suffering, you're resisting doing something stupid. Amen? For I consider that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. That's us. Even creation is waiting for us. For the creation was subjected to fertility not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also be delivered from the bondage of what? Corruption. Into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Why? Because the whole earth is corrupt. It's ruled by Satan's kingdom. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption and redemption of our body. For we are saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with what? Perseverance. Perseverance. Does perseverance have anything to do with resistance? Yeah. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. Well, he empowers us, doesn't he? And he also will pray through us the perfect will of God. For we do not know what we ought to, what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered or understood. Because when you pray in tongues, you don't know what you're praying. Thank God. 
Because the enemy knows what you're praying, and he knows what you think. He's got access to our mind. He's a spirit. He walks right through us if he wants to. Hello? So that's why when we pray in the spirit, it's the only tongues, it's the only language the devil does not understand. Other than that, he's trying to interfere with everything you pray. That's why it's important to bind principalities, powers of darkness, wickedness in heavenly places, taking your dominion and authority in the heavenlies. These are things that must be learned and applied every day. You must attack first or you'll be struck. We are our first strikers. Amen? Praise God. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the what? Will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew, he what? Also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Again, for whom he foreknew. Did he know you before? Yeah. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also will glorify. Sufferings are attacks of worldly desires of the lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life can't be compared to what awaits us in glory. So we will resist, amen, by the power of Christ, the Holy Spirit, and our reward will be more strength all the way home to eternity. We will get stronger and stronger and stronger, allowing the Holy Spirit to transform us into the image of Christ as sons and daughters of God Almighty. It is a process. It just takes something very important, cooperation. There's a lot of words in that word, especially the operation, you know. Hallelujah. Romans 7. Hallelujah. Verse 15. So many times people go, man, I don't know why I do what I do. <clears throat> Just stop it. <laughs> Romans 7, 15. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. But now it is, oh, when I say 15, yeah, thank you. For what I am doing, I do not understand. For what I will to do, that I do not practice. But what I hate, that I stink and do. If then I do what I will not to do, I agree with the law that it is good. But now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. What's sin? The presence of evil. For I know that in me that is in my flesh. Your old man is now your flesh. Nothing good dwells. For it will, for to will is present with me. In other words, the desire is with me. But how to perform what, I, what is good, I do not find. For the good that I will to do, I do not do. But the evil I will not to do, that I practice. Hmm. Now, if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it. But the presence of evil that dwells in me called sin. I find in the law that evil is present with me, the one who wills to do good. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man, the new man, the new creation. But I see another law in my members, the old man. Warring against the law of my mind, my thoughts. And bringing me into captivity under the law of sin, which is in my members. In other words, in my flesh. O wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from me? From the body of death, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the thoughts or the mind, I myself serve the law of God. In other words, the new mind of Christ, I serve the law of God. But with the flesh, the mind of the carnal, the law of sin. Old man of flesh, born in sin, servant of darkness, deceived. By self-righteousness, justification, weak in the spirit, under the prince of power of error. 
must receive a new spirit. Needs to be born again. Amen. Under the power of the Holy Spirit, somebody none under the thoughts of the mind of Christ to resist the sin of the old man also. So not only are you fighting powers of darkness, but you're still battling against your old self. But if you're led by the Spirit, your old man is crucified. Romans 12. So in reality, where is the battlefield? It's in your mind. Your thoughts. That's why you got to ask yourself, who told me that? And where did you come from? Verse 1, 1 and 2, I beseech you therefore, brother, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, with, which is your reasonable or res service or your responsibility every day. Verse 2. Let's speak it. Do not be what? Conformed to the world, this world, but be transformed by the what? Renewing of your mind or your thoughts, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We are being transferred by the renewing of our thoughts, created new memories, and actually we're creating new memory space with memories of righteousness empowered by the mind of Christ. What's it going to do? It's going to resist the voices of evil temptations. Again, this is the state of being born again, not just the state of being saved. Man, when you first get saved, it's rough. I mean, God is with you. He treats you like a baby. Amen? There are things that he does, man, when you first get saved. But then there's a point where he says, okay, you need to get filled with my spirit now. I'm only going to carry you so far then you got a responsibility. Amen? But so many people quit. The Bible says desire the gifts of the Spirit. Desire to be filled. Psalm 23, or Proverbs 23. Resistance builds strength. So never think that your attacks are going to weaken you if you resist. They're going to strengthen you. But see, the enemy wants you to think that you're being weakened because you're being attacked. But that's a lie. Stop listening to that voice. I can't believe I'm being attacked all day. Praise God. You should look like Samson by the end of the day. Hallelujah. Some of us feel like we should have been Samson already. <laughs> Proverbs 23 verse 1 says, When you sit down with a ruler or somebody in authority, consider carefully what, you, what is before you. And put a knife to your throat if you're a person given to appetite. In other words, some people just accept everything. They don't test nothing. You remember the kings always had someone to test it, their food. Because they're always trying to get killed. Do you know that you're always trying to get killed? Uh, hello? And I've been at some restaurants I thought they tried to kill me. Hallelujah. Put a knife to your throat if you are a man of given appetite. Verse 3, do not desire his delicacies, for they are what? Deceptive food. Now, don't think physically. Think spiritually. It's words of thoughts. What you're agreeing with, it becomes deceptive food. Do not overwork to be rich because of your what? Own understanding. Stop it. You will... Will you set your eyes on that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away like an eagle toward heaven. Verse 6, let's speak it. Do not eat the bread of a compromiser or a miser. Do not desire his what? Delicacies. For as he thinks in his heart, so he is. Now, wait a minute. Does the devil know that? 
Did he know, do you, does he know that if he can cause you to think the way he wants you to think, he's got you? Yes. As you think, so you're going to be. And it's going to come out of your mouth, too. Because what you speak is what you eat. Yeah. For as he thinks in his heart, so he is. Eat and drink, he says to you. That's that voice of the stranger. But his heart is not with you. The morsel so you have eaten, you will vomit up and waste your pleasant words. Don't speak in the hearing of a fool or an idiot. For he would despise the wisdom of your words. As we think, so we're going to be. Resisting thoughts of desire to commit acts of touching and agreeing with the works of the flesh will harm you. Amen? It will open the door. You will go back into the image of the enemy because that's what he wants you to do. You'll do the same things you used to do in your old life. Everybody knows someone that used to be a believer and maybe some of them were strong in the Lord. All of a sudden, poof, they're gone. They're back to right the way they used to be. You know, it was the first thing they thought, I need to get, I need to, I need to get back to life. When they sold their life. That's the first thing I need that they think about. I need to get back to life. I need to get on with my life. You don't have a life. That's the problem. It's his life, not your life. It's not my life anymore. It's his life. We live for him. We don't live for us anymore. That's why the word says deny yourself. Pick up the cross and follow. Deny yourself. Deny your old life. And anyone who begins to build on his old life is an abomination. Galatians 5. Oh, happy days. Galatians 5. Is everybody there? In verse 6, or 16, I'm sorry, Galatians 5, 16. 5, 16. It's right after Galatians 5.15. Are we there? Let's speak it. I say then walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another. So you do not do the things that you wish or you desire. Verse 18, but if you are led by the Spirit, you're not under the law, which is sin and death. Now, the works of the flesh are evident, which are what? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, which is drug abuse, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions and heresies, Envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like of which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in time past, that those who practice any one of these things and the other things that are rebellious towards God will not inherit the kingdom of God. But I'm an unbeliever 30 years and been practicing these things. Well, you're an idiot. Deceived. And you're going to wake up cooking. Amen? No access to home if you practice and participate in the works of sinful nature of the old man flesh. Without resisting, there's no reward. Ephesians 2.
See, people will scream out in that religious state of being saying, but I'm under grace. Grace is God's plan. Amen? It's God's plan to escape. If you're not participating with the plan, you're not under grace. Grace booked. Now there's mercy waiting. <laughs> Ephesians 2, verse 1. Is everybody okay? Are we getting this? So don't think your resistance is in vain. Amen? In verse 1, let's speak it. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind or the thoughts, and were by nature children of wrath just as the others. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ by grace you've been saved by his what? Plan. And raised us together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come, he might show the existing, exceeding riches of his grace in his kingdom toward us in Christ Jesus. See where it says might. Every time you see a might from God, it's because you've got to cooperate to make it. He says, for by grace you've been saved through faith and that of your Cells. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should, what? Walk in them. Old man under the rule, the rule of this earth called Satan and his kingdom. We, you and I, we had no resistance then. We just did whatever we felt like. The doctrines of demons. Amen. No resistance, no strength by the nature. We are children of wrath. But God of his mercies and grace. You know what? Everyone in here was rescued because somebody else was praying for you. That's how we were rescued. Somebody's been praying for you. I'll never forget, even when I was a heathen out there dealing dope and smuggling and doing all the other stuff, somebody called my house, told my father, we're praying for your son. He told me, I said, good. You know, what could I say? I was a heathen. I didn't say praise God. I didn't even know how to say praise God. My family would probably pass out if they heard that. I would have passed out if I heard that. Second Peter 1. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad we're not religious? Because with the Spirit of the Lord is freedom. And God just wants our heart. He wants us. He wants us to know who we are in Him. He wants us to be able to get to a place where we can trust Him no matter what's going on. So we can resist everything of the enemy and go forward. To be an example. To be a witness. It doesn't mean you go around knocking on doors. Amen. Hallelujah. When they come to the door just praying the Holy Ghost, they'll take right off. Whew. The only thing you see is the bottom of their feet. Second Peter chapter 1. Verse 2. Let's speak it. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God. And of Jesus our Lord. Is everybody with me? Okay. And his divine what? His divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. Divine power, amen, by the Holy Spirit. By which we have been given, given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may partake, you may partake if you cooperate, 
of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. But also by this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance, which is resistance, and perseverance, godliness. To godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will never be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted, even to blindness, and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins, his old man. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never what? You will never stumble. You will be always a resister. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly in the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Again, it's divine power so that you and I can resist the attacks of temptations. Through the power of the Holy Spirit combined with the word of promises allows me and you to partake of the divine nature. Amen? That resists. Now let me tell you something. Nothing can overcome the divine nature. Nothing. It overcomes, it resists, it, and it destroys your enemy. The divine nature, nothing can touch. When a divine nature in you is activated, can't touch me. Do, 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 do. Amen? Can't touch this. Praise God. Romans 8. We want to keep the divine nature activated, don't we? To overcome. So that you and I can resist and get stronger and stronger and stronger. Not weaker. Romans 8, 1, let's speak it. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Now, here is the kicker. Who do not walk according to the flesh. Hello. Hello. That means if you're in Christ Jesus and you're walking according to the flesh, you're under the condemnation. That's the judgment of God. But according to the Spirit, then you're not. Verse 2, for the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh. On account of sin, he condemned the sin in the flesh. That the righteous requirement, everyone say requirement. Everybody must get to that place. It's a requirement. Amen? That's called cooperation. That the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us. Who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. So you must walk according to the Spirit to fulfill that law, which releases you from death, hell, and the grave. Amen? Verse 5. For those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. That's the world. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be fleshly minded or carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it cannot, it is not subject to the law of God. This is the old man's mind. It can, it's, it's not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. That's why you must be born again. That's why you must get a new spirit. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Only those who are in the spirit. It is a, re -righteous, a righteous requirement of the law of the spirit of life in the new life to those that resist the ways of the flesh but, and, but submit to the way of the Holy Spirit of Christ. James 4. James 4. Resistance builds strength. And the stronger you get, the more humble you get. You may be bolder 
Amen. But you're still humbler. When you're in the flesh, you get bolder and you get prideful. And you think you know it all. Verse 1, James 4. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pleasure that war in your members? You lust and do not have. You murder and covenant and cannot obtain. You fight and worry, yet you do not have because you do not ask. You ask and you don't receive because you ask it amiss, that you may spend it on your flesh or your pleasures. Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is an enemy with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously? But he gives more grace, more grace. What's grace? Plant God's plan. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but does what? Gives grace to the humble. Therefore, do what? Submit to God's ways in his spirit. Then you'll be able to resist the devil, and he will flee from you. And I'm going to close at 1 Corinthians 3. How many of you know this is a matter of life and death? It's time people woke up and became serious about this. Time is running out, you know. I mean, who knows? The Lord can come any moment. Wish he'd come right now. <laughs> Take me home. Glory. <laughs> 1 Corinthians 3, 16. 1 Corinthians 3, 16. Okay. Sounds good. Let's speak it. Is everybody there? Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit dwells in you? If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Let no one deceive himself. If any among you seems to be wise in this age, let him become a fool that he may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he catches the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise that they are futile. Therefore, let no one boast in men, for all things are yours, whether Paul or Apostles, Cephas or the world of life or death. Or things present or the things to come, all are yours. And you are Christ, and Christ is God's. Remember, resistance builds what? Strength. That's where the word says, he who is in you is greater than he is in the world. But remember, you and I have been given the anointing and the power of Christ to resist. That's why it's important that we stay filled with the Spirit and filled with the Word. Filled with the Spirit, filled with the Word. And stay in fellowship. Stay in fellowship. Because the enemy likes lone rangers. Amen? He loves lone rangers. Yeah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. And we ask in the mighty name of Jesus that the seed that has been imparted in us will be protected by the blood of Christ and be anointed in the name of Jesus. That you'll bring to remembrance the things that we learned tonight. And the simple phrase of resistance builds strength, backed by the Holy Spirit to empower us so that the divine nature can be manifested for your glory in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Praise God. <laughs>